Hi everyone, I'm Mike Lydon. I'm a volunteer and teacher at the International Academy of Consciousness office in New York City. I'm here today with Wagner Allegretti, former president of the International Academy of Consciousness and currently senior instructor, researcher, and volunteer. Uh, Wagner is an engineer by trade and author of the book Retrocognitions, an investigation into the memories of past lives and the period between lives. Uh, we're here today to talk about Wagner's presentation at the upcoming um, the International Conference on Conscientiology, and uh, that's going to be May 22nd through 24th of this year, 2015. Um, and uh, Wagner, your talk is uh, the uh, preliminary results of detection of bioenergy and vibrational state via fMRI. Yeah. So I wonder if you could uh, just tell us a bit about this. For instance, um, if you could just give the audience a summary of what question you aim to answer in this presentation. Yeah. In fact, this came from a hypothesis they had that if we do VLO, if we start moving our energies up and down, this would be, you know, registered or would show in the brain through the function of MRI. In fact, I wanted to see first if the action of moving energy provokes in the brain any kind of uh, result, like, like showing the brain engaged into the production of VLO. Because there is a point here, if we are moving energies inside of our energy body, yes. we have a very difficult question here. Is the brain moving the energy inside of the energetic body? Okay. Or it is the part of brain of the psychosoma moving our energies, but then there is an echo in the physical brain, because we are thinking inside of the brain. But a part of this also was and is to see if uh, the result of VLO, vibrational state, then provoke also some kind of change neurological in the brain. Yes. So how much the brain causes, how much the brain receives, suffers the vibrational state. Yes? I see, I see, okay. And so for audience members that are not familiar with um, some of the technical terminology that uh, Wagner is using, the VLO uh, that he's talking about is a movement of energy yeah. whereby we, we circulate chi or prana through our body. And so, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but this presentation is about whether or not when we're moving uh, energy through our body, if that can be registered with uh, standardized scientific instruments. Exactly, exactly. Like, yeah. Because certainly I'm not doing this to prove to myself or to others that energy exists or vibration I state, anything like this. Yeah. But what I want is to see if we can create a kind of a bridge between our level of experience, our body of knowledge, and the typical academic science that very, you know, correctly demands and wants some evidence, some things that we can really replicate. And I have done these, these experiments. In fact, I have ran three series of experiments in three different moments in 2009, 2010, and now recently the end of 2014. And trying to see why, for instance, I do this energy movement when I am exteriorizing energies, you know, if something shows. And uh, at the very first time when we run the first series of experiences, what happened was something very interesting, that we noticed, you know, some images appearing outside of my head, something that could not, should not happen, as this, this technique, the function MRI, is supposed to, to register changes in the blood, you know, level of um, oxygen inside, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. so, is this technique called BOLD, B-O-L-D, is based exactly on this. So after I got these images outside of my head, I thought, well, perhaps the bioenergy that I'm expanding, intensifying here, is changing some property in the air mm. at such a level that the machine can pick. I see. And then what I did, and this is the other part of the title there, I thought of using one thing they, they, they use in the machine that is called the Phantom. Phantom is just basically a portion of water in a bottle that is put there inside of the machine instead of the person because it is not something alive, it's not something with the metabolism changing, it's an homogeneous, you know, a medium that they know very well, so they can use it as a reference, a standard to adjust the machine, to calibrate the machine. So we did this and then in another experiment I tried to send energy, transmit, like if I were healing someone or the water. I see. And the thing is that a lot of images started appearing inside of the water. And we repeated, repeated. Most of the people said, oh, this is just noise. No, it's not noise because at the very same conditions, very same position, but without sending any energy, we got no noise. 
mm-hmm. the noise. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying here, no, <laughs> in a, how could they say, in a uh, analytical way, like analogy. Uh, without my externalization of energy, there was no noise. So this last time when I went there to Brazil, because I got the chance of using one machine there, I repeated this and even used other uh, substances. I see. And these things, the three series of uh, this experiment, experience, but mainly the last one, are going to be the core of this presentation there at the Congress at the campus now. I see. Okay, so basically this sounds like, um, my next question was going to be, what significance does this have for the research of human consciousness? But this sounds like something that's quite significant in that, um, uh, let's say in parapsychology or in the noetic sciences, they're looking for physical evidence like this, exactly. that bioenergy is a measurable phenomenon. Exactly. Um, because like you were saying before, we can feel it moving through our bodies. People have known about this who are sensitive uh, for centuries, um, exactly. you know, dating back to uh, ancient China. But um, you're saying that this is something, it, it's actually physically measurable. When, when you're even exteriorizing energy or, or sending uh, life force basically to this inanimate object, the fMRI is reading it, exactly. is picking it up. Absolutely. Uh-huh. The relevance is exactly there, Mike. Because if we can repeat this, and certainly what we need is other people repeating, replicating the very same thing. That's why I call this preliminary results. Because I cannot say I have proved. Yeah. You no. Know, like a final thing. There is no such thing, by the way. But anyway, I want to see if, during the Congress, if I can get some uh, ideas, analysis, even constructive criticisms. If people could tell me, look, Wagner, have you tried this? Have you tried to prevent such a possibility here or there? So getting this feedback, I'm going back to Brazil to have a fourth run of these experiments, but exactly trying to include all these new contributions. And with this, I want to see if other people learning about this during the Congress, if they can, if they will try to replicate the same thing. Because if we have different machines with different people following about the same protocol and getting the same results, and then it is something big, as you said, then we would have a kind of very good relative truth, a relative proof that energy, bioenergy, energy, organ, whatever, exist, can be controlled. And my whole point on this, you asked about relevance, is I think if we can prove bioenergy is halfway to the consciousness. Yeah is halfway, and halfway for me is a big, huge step. Because then perhaps in the future, this is what I want, is to see if we understand better this bioenergy. I think we can develop what I call a bioenergy or bioenergetic technology. Things that run on bioenergy. If we can detect, measure bioenergy, we will be able to detect a person projected outside of the body. You put the sensor in another, or the transducer, the detector in another room, Another here, the person leaves the body, suppose if we detect a reduction of the amount of energy here and an increase there at the other room. Wow, this is something big. So, so presuming that when we have an out-of-body experience, commonly called astral projection, that there's a non-physical energy body that, uh, that leaves the physical, exactly. we can, through using bioenergy technology, we can measure where that is, you know, we can measure its, its interaction effects with physical, uh, with physical matter. Absolutely. Yeah. And if we can go ahead with this idea in the future of uh, the bioenergy technology, we can develop so many different things. You know, more than just accumulators, but we could make, for instance, cameras sensitive to bioenergy. So we could take pictures of uh, auras or chakras or even extra physical consciousnesses. Yes. I mean, diseased. <laughs> Best yes. <laughs> consciousness, yeah. So or people outside of the body, yeah. and there is something interesting also because many times in engineering we have this that we call transduction. Yes, you have one particular form of energy changes some property in the material, and then you can see another form of energy on the other side or a change in parameters there. And a microphone, a camera like this, they work exactly on this principle. What is the sound? You no, know, controlling or altering, changing some properties of electric, electricity there, and then we have the sound being registered there, or the image. So, if we can do the reversed transduction, you put 
electricity and you get some form of subtle energy and I think this is when uh, things start getting interesting. Yeah, yeah. It would change medicine. Medicine, physics, ecology and so many other things because this experiment I did in which I sent energies to the water and it changed some properties of the water. This is very relevant because that machine, functional MRI, is magnetic resonance of the nuclei of the atoms there. So if this stands, shows that bioenergy is changing a property inside of the nuclei. Very few things in the, in the world, in nature, even in our technology, goes that deep. I see, I see. Well, I'd love to sit here and continue asking Absolutely. questions, but I would say that for people who are interested in Mr. Allegretti's research, come to the Congress. You can check out the links below if you're interested. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank sir. you for the opportunity. Okay. See you next time. See you at the Congress. See you there. Okay. Thank you.